Welcome back, everybody, to What I Bought on Steam. I think I got this 50% off. This is episode one, part five, I think, of The Wolf Among Us. We are just now approaching the mirror. See if it's something that tells us something. Yeah, <laughs> there's a sentence. I want to do that again. Oh, yeah. I'm smiling now because I look so hey, good. Magic mirror. I got a question. I don't have time for this shit. Your impatience is callow. You're needlessly cruel, but have some respect for our history and rules. Ah, rhymes. Mirror, mirror. If you're able, tell me all about this fable. Ah, you have to rhyme talk to it. So yeah, it would be talk it to the. Seconds away from kicking a hole in you. There's no need for that. Fine. Rhyming on cue is difficult. Do you wish to know? Not a rapper, not a poet. The Show woodsman. Me the woodsman. He's my uh, top suspect right now. Where is he? What you see is complete. The woodsman stumbles down a street. No shit. Which street? <laughs> I'm sorry, Bigby. I can only show you what can be seen. Too snow. snow white. Hey, lady. Not so pretty. Much of a request. She's in this very room. Yeah. Okay. Show me Buffkin. Is he drunk? Yep. Hey, put down the bottle and get to work. <laughs> Still looking. <laughs> oh, I like that guy. I don't know her name. Not yet, anyway. Well, until you do. Nobody right now. Very well. Please return should you wish to ask about someone else. Or someone new. Ah! Well, I'm sure. That seemed a little cartoony. Okay. Thank I haven't really checked the audio quality of this, so uh I'm sure it's working. I'm sure you can hear me. I just don't know if the game audio is a bit too loud. We'll fix that on uh, episode 2 of The Wolf Among Us. Not my episode 2, because we're already in part 5. Um, anything else to check out? So the cursor is a little weird, because it doesn't pop up unless you get near it. Let's check this one. Sorry if I'm sniffing into the mic a little too much. I'm trying not to, but uh, you know, I live in Illinois. Live next to a farm. Everything's next to a farm. Everything's between a farm and something. So um, you know, there's corn right across the street and just tons of dust. It's killer on the eyes and the nose. Okay, let's go to the next page. Ah, it's the ring! No, hey! Don't do that. It's the ring. Let's check it out. This is the one. No, it's upside down. This symbol, Should be a smiley. Family or story. That's an odd one. Family name? Alairo? I'll go look it up. Alairo. That means every kind of fur in German. German. Don't there you go. Skin. Yes. What does it say? Donkey skin girl, also known as donkey skin, also known as <laughs> ass skin, <laughs> uh, prefers to go by the main fate. Oh. Buffkin, we don't need the commentary. So that's her name. That's what the title the story is. story of donkey skin. There was once a great king with a beautiful queen. The queen grew ill and had her husband promise to only marry the most beautiful girl in the kingdom. After a long search, it became clear that the only woman in the land that could match her beauty was... His daughter, Faith. Hmm. Creepy. She had a magic cloak made from the skin of her father's prized donkey that would hide her beauty so she could escape his kingdom. Eventually, she married a prince who could see past the magic cloak and knew her true beauty. And they lived happily ever after. Oh, that's a good fairy tale. To tell kids. Should and to tell I me. 
I like it. Can I smell? Yes. Please. And what's her husband's name? Lawrence. Prince Lawrence. Lawrence of Arabia? We got what we came for. Probably not. Yeah. Her name's Faith. She was married to Prince Lawrence. I mean, that's more than Her we... Her name was Faith. Yeah. You should talk to the husband. You think he did it? No, I don't. But we need to let him know about his wife. The problem with these is that you choose one, but it, it doesn't say what you want it to say exactly. It says more or too little or something. It says it in a different tone. Uh, not that it's really a problem. It's just, you know, it's like, ah, oh, shit. I, I should have said something else. Oops. It's a little weird using the uh, right stick to move everything. Yes. From the acts of a woodsman, a druid blessing, actually. Move the cursor, I guess. The last damn thing. I only translate. Hmm. What's it say about that? It says brickle bit in an older elvish hand. What's brickle bit? A magic word. What's it do? Makes animal shit gold. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh. <laughs> What's that? Uh, it reads, Mark of the House of the Frog Prince. It says Sigurn. Quite who I'm looking um, huh, There's a... Uh, Siegfried, that's who it is. That's a fairy tale. German fairy tale. Most of these seem like they're German fairy tales because most of the fairy tales that we know in the Western world are German fairy tales. And, uh, you know, we talk about Cinderella and the love uh, and finding Prince Charming and all that now. But it used to be uh, stories about staying out of the woods because going into the woods was dangerous the in the 15th century. There were animals. There were books. bears, we wolves, name, bees, like. rapists, thieves, marauders. Hey, it's me. I'm a cutie. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be me. <laughs> Should be more like right here. Yeah, more. Less said about that, the better. God, they do look creepy there. Right, buddy. The woodsman. Yep. And his axe. I wonder if he'll be a recurring villain, or if he's just like gonna go away soon yeah, the two of them. I wonder what the story was Beauty. Happier days. Hansel and Gretel Snow White Sleeping Beauty they were generally about um, not going into the woods There she is. Who's this guy? Girl? Guy. I don't know. Oh, that's probably Prince Lawrence. Or maybe his his wife, the old queen who was dying. It's hard to tell. Um, like, she's very feminine. Yeah, I think that's a dude. Yeah, that's a dude because the hat. They're all wearing tights. He likes his privacy, right? I wish Toad would like his a bit more. Nice hat. Ichabod Crane. Scared shitless. Oh, we're saying this before. Um, about Ichabod Crane. His character is completely different in the real story. It's not a horror story at all. It's written by Washington Irving. Um, and it's... Uh, maybe you remember from some of the movies there's the dude who's giving uh, Ichabod trouble for moving in Ichabod is the school teacher who likes uh, this woman who, or no, is Ichabod the school teacher? maybe he likes the school teacher and that's the woman 
um i forget but uh he moves to town yeah he moves to town he's the new school teacher and uh he likes this woman who's friends with the or who is like who everyone expects to marry uh the jock sort of guy i don't know what his actual um uh profession was i don't know if he was like a farmer or something but um so they go to the party and ichabod spends uh like well washington irving's as ichabod spending his point of view spends like two pages describing the food in a very sensual way like sexual like he's getting aroused as he's looking at the food and then he describes um the woman who he's after as like in terms of food as delectable delicious etc uh, so it's this kind of weird uh chemistry um uh, they got his his look right he's very thin and very um so i think he's a lot younger actually um in the story like the 40s i don't think he's balding and gray-haired um he uh, i mean he wouldn't be like 20 but um anyway he's uh like yeah it's a very weird relationship between food and uh sexuality and women and everything and then so he's leaving the party after he's had this description um and i i think things went well and um it's been four years since i've read this so sorry if i'm forgetting a lot of the details and uh the guy the uh, jock comes out and um he's riding a horse and he has this and he throws the pumpkin at ichabod and he jumps off the bridge and um uh, is hurt from no more again because he he leaves town and um there's a note at the end of the story that when he wrote this uh and he read it for some people there someone asked him what was the point of that <laughs> like what's the moral of the story because this is 1700s early 1800s uh when washington irving like the beginning of america he wrote the knickerbocker's history of new york uh yeah knickerbocker's history of new york um which is a very good book uh you should read it um which uh, a knickerbocker is someone from new york um back in those times who was dutch because that was originally like a dutch colony i think called uh, new amsterdam got changed to new york when someone bought it out anyway uh ichabod uh or washington irving kind of replied that there is no point or that the point is whatever you make it or something because you know he was very progressive for his time where he thought this is entertainment it doesn't have to have a point and um you know just that's not corrupting influence it used to be that novels and shit um were considered corrupting because of the uh romances the gothic romances the horror stories that people read and um uh it was, this was like in the 1600s um when people were like very religious obviously and the church uh said it had a corrupting influence and made people dream of these things and they should be only dreaming of heaven yada 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 and so um unless if something was fiction it was basically a lie and you shouldn't believe it and um uh god i don't know where my point is with this but uh, essentially um they had to uh pretend like the story was written by another person who doesn't want to be named and the author is just editing it and um this is more in england i think the author was just editing it and presenting it to the public so that the uh woman a lot of men pretended to be women um uh, didn't have to like have her shame uh shown to the public or whatever um it could just be this nameless woman and then it uh when it got like hugely popular like pamela a story of virtue and innocence or some shit about a man raping or trying to ra spending like 300 pages trying to rape his servant uh which is what pamela was um he like kidnaps her he traps her in the room he tries to like you know feel her up he calls her into a room and she the whole time she's writing home to her parents and they're like oh pamela it's so wonderful that you are resisting such um such advances by such a strong man and keeping your virtue intact yada 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 <laughs> um, and then at the end of it she marries him because she's like oh i'm gonna change him into a good man and then they do it um so it's like i know you're trying to rape me so to solve this to protect my virtue i'm going to marry you that's essentially the story and it was like the 
the biggest sensation of the time. It was revolutionary um, about how, uh, uh, like, how popular it was. And the church was saying, oh, man, this is a good story because it's talking about protecting a woman's virtue. It's talking about sex before a marriage, yada, yada, yada. <coughs> Sorry, I'm saying yada, yada, yada a lot. Um, but it's really just like a, a rape story, a rape fantasy. Um, and uh, the guy eventually came out and said, yep, I wrote it. Uh, you know, this wasn't written by some woman, it was written by me, and um, you should be adoring me. And so this other guy, William Henry Fielding, um, I don't remember who wrote Pamela, some no-name hack job, um, he, uh, when, when, uh, Henry, Henry Fielding, William Henry Fielding? God, what did I just say it was? Fielding, whatever his first name. I swear, I just said it. William Henry Fielding? No, Henry Fielding. He he wrote uh, a history of Tom, jo uh, Tom Jones, a history, the history of Tom Jones, a foundling. Um, a really long story that borders on picaresque. Ooh, I should end this soon. Um, but it's just a, a really great. All right, boys and girls. Uh, this should still be episode five or part five of uh, episode one of the Wolf Among Us, but um. I got cut off because I was running a, I was running low on frames, and so I figured I was running low on disk space. Normally I record to an external hard drive, but that was in the other room, uploading to the other computer, uploading to YouTube, and so I was recording to my uh, laptop because I thought I had plenty of room. I had 100 gigabytes. You know, I didn't think I, this episode would be long enough, but then I started going off on Pamela, written by Samuel Richardson. And I'm going to continue, so uh, if it's only been a second, hopefully this has been a smooth transition. Um, but let, no, let me, let, me, let me read for you the Wikipedia entry for um, uh, Pamela or A Virtue Rewarded, okay? It's, <laughs> I think you'll uh, appreciate it, what I'm talking about. Because I was talking about it in a very vague way. I haven't read it for a few years. And this will tell you exactly what it says. Oh, okay. Pamela, or Virtue Rewarded, is an epistolary novel by Samuel Richardson, first published in 1740. Epistolary means it's written in the form of letters. Letters uh, from Pamela to her mother or father, um, or occasionally Pam uh, letters to Pamela. Um, it tells the story of a beautiful 15-year-old maidservant named Pamela Andrew, Andrews, whose land, country landowner master, Mr. B, it's actually Mr. B, dash, 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 pretending like it's a real person and you're just giving his initial, uh, makes unwanted advances towards her after the death of his mother, whose maid Pamela has been since age 12. Mr. B is infatuated with her look, with her first by her looks, then by her innocence and intelligence. But his high rank hinders him from proposing marriage. He abducts her, locks her up in one of his estates, and attempts to seduce her and rape her. She rejects him continually, but starts to realize that she is falling in love with him. He intercepts her letters to her parents, reading them. Reading them, he becomes even more enamored by her innocence, intelligence, and continuous es escape attempts. Her virtue is eventually rewarded when he sincerely proposes an equitable marriage to her. In the novel's second part, Pamela attempts to build a successful relationship with him and to acc acclimatize to upper-class upper society. The story, a bestseller of its time, was very widely read, but criticized for its perceived licentiousness. Um, so yeah, it's a... It's a, it's a bullshit story. Um, I'm going to go until I finish this kind of ramble, because uh, I'm a bit of a maniac with literature. But um, Henry Fielding, uh, not Henry William Fielding's or William Henry Fielding, or whatever the hell I was saying. Um, I was saying William Henry Harrison, president. Uh, but this is a British novelist um, and playwright. Uh, William, or not God, Henry Fielding. Uh, he wrote a parody of it called Shamala, where you reverse the role, um, the genders, essentially, and have Mrs. B uh, uh, attempting to seduce and rape um, 
uh, Pamela's brother or cousin or something, um, uh, who is a boy, and, uh, <laughs> and it just shows that virtue is not virginity, which is what they're talking about, if I didn't explain that. Virtue is more than just being pure in the eyes of the Lord, or whatever the fuck it, Pamela was trying to say, and, um, he was really critical of it, and, uh, making fun of it, he was a set, uh, set, satirist, and, um, it's great, uh, and then, um, yeah, he, he wrote Shamala, he wrote something else, I think Shamala is actually talking about, um, it was a pamphlet, or a short story, talking about, uh, Pamela, the story, but from Pamela's point of view, where she is a prostitute, and she's just working this guy over, trying to woo him, and pretending to hold out, while really, like, being a whore and doing it on the side and stuff like that um and uh uh yeah but he did write another short story um about pamela's brother i forget what it was called um but yeah it's a uh, it's a good uh, if you're interested in the history of literature and the history of the novel especially the british novel um, pamela is one of the early prototypes for uh the novel that we know today it's um a full arcing story it has the same characters it continues with the same conflict throughout it has a resolution etc whereas if you look at something like um history of tom jones by henry fielding um, it's considered a picaresque novel which i don't know that i really believe that i think it's a it's a novel with picaresque elements in the middle of it that could be taken out and then it would be considered a novel uh, but a picaresque novel is um, inspired by a, I want to say Spanish story, uh, type of story, um, about the rogue and the life of the rogue on the road, and he has very episodic uh, adventures where, w not episodic like we know it, not episodes like episodes of The Wolf Among Us, but episodes like... Um, uh, like a sitcom or Doctor Who or something where... Uh, you know, one story is completely separate from the next episode. Um, and, you know, nowadays we have, like, arcing uh, storylines throughout our sitcoms and throughout Doctor Who and whatever else. But in those days it was just very separate. The only thing that binded it were... Um, the only things that binded it were uh, the characters. And um, if you look at... Uh, Robinson Crusoe, that has picaresque elements to it, too, uh, where he goes off to Brazil or South America and starts a new life there and becomes a farmer, and then he's coming back and he gets shipwrecked. Um, there's a lot more to those stories than you realize if you ever go back and read them. Um, they're not just the, the edited versions that we read. Anyway, that'll end this episode. Uh, maybe I'll end it prior to this, and this will just be like a little bonus content because I did go on a rant, and I just um, uh, stayed on this little screen for a while, which, uh, you know, I do that. Um, but yeah, that'll be the end of episode 5, or episode, yeah, episode, that'll be the end of this video. Um, I'm a bit of a maniac when it comes to literature. I was a literature major in college and creative writing, and uh, so I love stories, which is also why I think I like The Wolf Among Us. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, love you guys. Bye.